Chapter 3. Endocannabinoid System. Why is marijuana effective? For years, cannabis was used medicinally without a clear understanding of how and where it acted in the brain and body. Now, several decades of research have led to a better understanding of how cannabis works, allowing scientists to harness the therapeutic effects of its main mind-altering ingredient, or THC, and to extract useful constituents such as CBD or cannabidiol. Remarkably, the human body makes its own versions of these ingredients called endocannabinoids, which help regulate almost all brain and body processes. The endocannabinoid system is involved in the regulation of multiple physiological processes in the body, including pain perception, appetite control, temperature regulation, regeneration, healing, inflammation, and multiple other functions. The characterization of the endocannabinoid system in our body and its receptors has led to a greater understanding of what this plant is actually capable of doing in our bodies based on where these receptors are located and how their function is tied in with various physiological processes. There are two types of receptors for cannabis in our bodies. CB1 receptors, which are mainly present in our brain, spinal cord, or the central nervous system, as well as the peripheral nerves. And the CB2 receptors, which are, are usually located on immune cells. The highest density of receptors is in our brains, and uh, especially in areas that process learning, memory, uh, pain perception, emotions, balance, and many other processes. Uh, for instance, there's a primitive area of our brain called the amygdala, which is involved in the processing of painful and traumatic memories, and it eventually effectively extinguishes some of the painful and traumatic memories so that we can move on, which is a great evolutionarily preserved survival strategy. The medical use of cannabis is based on several caveats. The first one is that it has an amazingly safe side effect profile. No one has ever died directly from a lethal dose of cannabis. The lethal dose of cannabis is in fact so huge that it cannot be consumed or administered in one single setting to a human being. Uh, the amazingly safe side effect profile comes from a relatively relative scarcity of receptors in the brain stem where the cardi cardiac and respiratory control centers reside. Uh, for instance, for narcotic analgesics uh, like Vicodin or Percocets, opioid receptors are in abundance in the brain stem so that if you take an overdose of those pills, your cardiac and respiratory function goes down, leading to respiratory arrest or death. Whereas for cannabis, because there's such a shortage of receptors in the brainstem, you just can't die from an overdose. So it doesn't really suppress your cardiac or respiratory function. The second caveat that makes cannabis so useful as medicine is that there are about 60 cannabinoids or so and up to 400 compounds in cannabis that have multiple actions. A lot of them we don't even know about. This makes cannabis a very versatile therapeutic tool which can be used for a wide spectrum of illnesses. Okay, the third caveat that makes cannabis very special for medical use is that it targets the entire being of a patient, spirit, mind, and body. For example, if you had chronic lower backache, a very common problem in America, um, your muscles are tense, the nerve is inflamed, uh, you might be depressed from having chronic pain or anxious. Uh, cannabis targets all of those different facets in different ways. First, it relaxes your muscles, it allays anxiety, elevates your mood, diverts your attention away from pain, in addition to directly targeting pain receptors. 
In this way, it breaks the pain cycle so that you can move on. And if you're taking Vicodin or opiates in addition to Motrin or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, it also combats the usage of those by reducing the need for them, as well as abating some of the side effects you get from them. For instance, um, non-steroidal analgesics like Motrin can upset your stomach, cause gastritis, inflammation in the stomach and ulcers, and cannabis tends to settle your GI tract. It's anti-nausea, for instance. And lastly, the last reason why cannabis is so suited for medical use is that its addictive potential is really minimal. Um, with strong, heavy use of daily use of cannabis, only about 10% of people really get addicted to it. There is a withdrawal symptom with cannabis uh, based on irritability, insomnia, but that's only after years of daily use and the equivalent of four to five joints a day.